dear Cuba, whenever you are ready, the floor is yours. I think I don't need to introduce anything else. You can share your screen. You can tell us everything about your um your work. And okay. yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so let me get started. Perfect. <laughs> okay. So um First of all, I'd like to uh, express my gratitude to Elinet family and our Turkish GE team coordinator, Dr. El Kemalol Er, for giving me this opportunity to share my research with people all around the world. Um, so this is Kibraya Arbesen, and uh, as you can see on the screen, so these are my team, um, uh, these are my colleagues, um, team members of Turkey GE research um, team. I've been working as an English language instructor uh, for more than uh, six years. Um, and I'd like to mention that this presentation presumably will not take more than 45 minutes. So I appreciate your patience. Let's get started with the um, root of this presentation. I will first try to introduce my reference point and explain why this uh, study is important, and then we will take a look at related studies conducted so far in the review of the literature. We will then move on to the methodology, which can be considered as the heart of the study. I'll then share my major findings with you and try to draw attention to some significant issues. Finally, I'll conclude my remarks with major implications and recommendations for further research. Okay, so I'd like to say that ELF reality has been the main reference point of the thesis uh, or my project. What is this ELF reality I'm talking about? According to Lung and Jenkins, the progressive increase in the worldwide population's mobility for economic and political reasons in the last few decades has been accompanied by intensification of linguistic diversity in many places. And based on the data on British Council, the total number of English speakers around the world is now over 1.75 billion. And by 2020, uh, they forecast that number will reach 2 billion, which is the fact now we are facing. And roughly one out of every four years users of English in the world is a native speaker of English language. Therefore, it won't be wrong to say um, that English is being shaped at least as much by its non-native speakers as by its native speakers. Dynamism of acknowledged model proposed by Kashru, which, which categorizes English speakers into three circles as inner, outer, and expanding was also changed, and the model was rearranged by him based on speakers' language proficiency, such as high and low proficiency. In this new model, the inner circle group is considered as proficient English speakers who are achieve functional nativeness as opposed to genetic nativeness. And here are some characteristics of proficient ELF speakers, according to Jenkins, Kogo, and Dewey. Uh, creative use of chunking, highly skilled communicators, code switch to promote solidarity, uh, projecting their own cultural identity, and uh, creatively build uh, their own idiom, prioritizing successful communication and use of multilingual resources. Um, if ELF is such a reality, then isn't it the time to question ourselves as foreign language teachers? What is our goal? And we have to reconsider it. We have to reconsider it, suggests ELF scholars, and have to question some of the more deeply rooted assumptions we hold about language at Park and we suggest, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, I personally think I want my students to find their true potential, so why forcing them only to speak like native speakers and ignoring all these beautiful characteristics? Um, in the past, uh, the 
lacking of shared knowledge and sociocultural framing between elf speakers of different linguistic and cultural backgrounds is likely to lead to misunderstanding and communication difficulties as participants will rely on the norms of their mother tongue and native culture to interpret meaning. Elf researchers have tested the validity of such assumptions in elf communicative contexts by conducting empirical research. And results have showed that the instances of misunderstandings are rare. And when they do occur, if relevant to the successful completion of the exchange, they tend not to be ignored, but to be tackled and dealt with. Uh, and that speakers display a number of strategies at their disposal to negotiate the meaning. For this aim, I've been interested in strategic use of ELF and investigated negotiation of meaning strategies in ELT course books. Briefly, they include asking for help, um, and asking one's interlocutor to repeat, slow down, or um, clarify, or saying something in the second language, uh, and confirming that one has used the correct or appropriate language, um, confirming that one has been understood by repeating, summarizing uh, what one has heard, asking one's interlocutor to confirm, or guessing meaning and asking for confirmation, giving help trying to adjust to one partner language level by speaking slowly, repeating, giving examples, and asking if he or she has understood. Um, such kind of communication is called mediating communication in updated CEFR, and it is indicated that the aim of mediating communication is to facilitate understanding and shape successful communication between users and learners, uh, users and learners who may have individual sociocultural, sociolinguistic, or intellectual differences in standpoint. Here is an this is an interesting one. Here is an example of an authentic elf interaction, um, which was taken from the Batjaka study. There are three participants. Um, Marat has a Russian language background, Eshal has an Urdu a language background, and in this conversation, the term Holzu was introduced by Lin Lin, and Holzu is a translingual neologism the English lexical word Holz is conjoined with the Mandarin Chinese Zu. It's polysemous in that it can be used to mean to live, as in the phrase to live a life. Um, and to reside, as in the phrase, to reside in London. In line eight, Marat asked for help to understand this unfamiliar term, and the translingualism involved therefore facilitated the content development of their conversation. According to ELF researchers, such flexibility and dynamism uh, dynamic nature of multilingual uh, communication should be embraced. If you really want to take a step and make a change, we had better dwell on alpha-aware language pedagogy, which initially proposed by Bayard and Speckett, and the concept of alpha-awareness. This can be seen as a possible way of integrating ELF principles within ELT and prioritizing intelligibility and the needs of learners. Becoming alpha-aware means becoming aware of the observations and principles that emerge from understanding how ELF works. And alpha-awareness does not propose a different approach to teaching, uh, but a way of informing um, and enriching current approaches, such as task-based instruction by integrating aspects of authentic communication that involve the non-native speaker. Coursebook designers are, as a part of ELT community, should also engage with this authentic communication. For this aim, uh, Vettorel studies raise the question of the extent to which language learning materials can in fact be informed by an awareness of ELF principles, processes, and practices. 
As uh, she rightly comments, course books have a central role in most typical EFL classes. And in order for elements of EFL to become integrated in these contexts, they have to become integrated in course books first and foremost. However, as most course books have a strong native speakers orientation, primarily because of their being impacted by a high stake, uh, high stake um, testing culture, it is essential that teachers develop a capability for critically evaluating them with reference to and elf related concerns. Veteran's paper stresses the importance of teacher education in this endeavor. Uh, in this regard, uh, many transformative and effective studies were conducted so far. However, when I reviewed the literature, I came to realize that the little attention was given to ELT course books, and it has been a great extent and underexplored. We don't come across many details and prequel studies on how ELT course books dealt with the strategic use of ELF. So we should bear in mind that multilingual communication is being increasingly uh, recognized as a routine practice in social interactions involving individuals from different language backgrounds and as part of communicative competence. Therefore, there is a new understanding of communicative competence is needed in ELT course books. From second language acquisition perspective to English as a lingua franca perspective. So this study aims to investigate the negotiation of meaning strategies uh, in Cambridge English and Power course book series through an ELF lens to explore what kind of tasks and activities are provided to promote these strategies in Cambridge English and Power course book series, and to shed light on Turkish EFL instructors' perception. And what makes this study significant and different from the others? First of all, uh, communication strategies are used a lot in ELF talk. However, they have mostly been evaluated in second language acquisition context so far, rather than else. Um, and allocating time on communicative activities where students can use communication strategies is significant. And teachers promoting the use of effective communication strategies is beneficial for learners. Uh, to my knowledge, also, um, this, uh, this, no research was carried out on evaluating these strategies in ELT course books from an ELF framework in a Turkish context. And also, this study attempts to contribute to developing an ELF-aware pedagogy by evaluating recent and unexamined ELT course books used in a Turkish context. Uh, this study... Um, has some limitations. Since this study is qualitative, uh, the results cannot be generalized, and only four levels of uh, Cambridge English and Power course book series were evaluated. So B2 and C1 level books were excluded because they uh, were not thought uh, in the um, at, at the university in a prep school, and also com only communicative activities and tasks of the lessons in the Cambridge English and Power course books were examined. And the rationale behind these decisions will be explained in upcoming slides. Here are my research questions. What are the EFL instructors' own perceptions related to their practices towards negotiation of meaning strategies in Cambridge English and Power? And are negotiation of meaning strategies presented from an elsewhere perspective in the audio? and audiovisual materials in Cambridge English and Power, and what kind of tasks or activities which stimulate negotiation of meaning strategies are included in Cambridge English and Power. In the review of literature part, I will only be focusing related studies investigated communication strategies in ELC course books. Uh, for that Kim, Parichaban, and John uh, investigated communication strategies from uh, from an ELF perspective, 
uh, that attaches to native speaker and standard English norms. However, uh, here we can see that mostly vectoral and Luprior studies have shed light on strategy use of ELF in ELT course books. Uh, as for methodology, the study adopts social constructionism research paradigm, among other philosophical paradigms in qualitative research design. Ontologically, um, yeah, social constructionists adopt the idea that the reality is socially constructed. And epistemologically, it is assumed that the knowledge is constructed or emerges through dialogues and negotiations. And touching upon and exploring social reality is aimed through evaluation in the present study. Um, this case study undertakes an evaluative educational study which, uh, with pragmatic approach. And this study was conducted at the School of Foreign Languages at Chai University and purposeful, purposeful sampling method was adopted. So here are more information uh, about my context um, uh, participants. Um, so 33 Turkish EFL instructors who are using this book uh, were included to study and 15 uh, were excluded since they use different course book series. Um, this study involves two phases. The first phase aimed at answering the first research question, whereas the second phase aimed at answering second and third research questions of the present study. For the first research question, the ELF instructors believed attitudes and perspectives were obtained via an open-ended questionnaire, and the qualitative data was further examined through inductive thematic analysis. Brown and Clark's six-phase um, guide was followed by step-by-step. -step. Analysis was made via SPSS and Microsoft Excel. Microsoft Excel was used for all the analysis since it enabled the process to be easier and more systematic. For the second and third um, research questions, the data obtained from the evaluation of the course book via content analysis. Here, Alice's seven-step uh, retrospective material evaluation model was adopted for the uh, evaluation of the course book series. And um, Olinger's empirical study served as a guide for in-depth analysis of the dialogues between uh, or among non-native speakers in Cambridge English and Power. And these findings played a crucial role in evaluating uh, course book series in the study in terms of making the evaluation process much more systematic and comprehensive. And all the tasks highlighted in Hartono's study can be considered as codes in the present study. After an expert opinion in the field was solicite, uh, solicited for some modification, several codes were subsumed under only one code. Evaluation was made unit by unit to establish a better understanding of the present research. So there is more information about Cambridge English and Power. And uh, I'd like to actually focus on uh, this part, A and B lessons. There are many lessons in the book, A lesson, B lesson, uh, lesson C, lesson D. And here, A and B lessons reinforce the grammar and vocabulary, most by involving receptive and productive skills, while the C lesson itself focuses on expressions and phrases that are used in daily communication. So here are the sections examined and they are carefully uh, selected, also based on the research questions. So let's now, this is uh, really um, exciting uh, because let's um, take a look at uh, what English, Cam Cambridge English and Power Series claim. Uh, they are the ex uh, ex ex um, extract from the uh, teacher's book. Uh, when I read this claim, let's take a look, real world video. Language is showcased through high quality video filmed in the real world, which shows language clearly in and in context. Let's take a look at another claim. Everyday English, 
exploratory coverage of functional language uh, for common everyday situations, helping learners to communicate effectively in the real world. Um, when I read these claims as a transformed alpha aware teacher, curiosity aroused in me to investigate the authenticity of the dialogue inside the series, because they are very strong claims and related to current reality of English. As you can see, real world, um, the term real world is mentioned um, in many, many times um, in the book. So when examining the audio script in the course books, I adopted first uh, a definition of ELF and excluded, ex I excluded native speaker and non-native speaker interaction. So because according to health, health interactions are defined as interactions between members of two or more different lingua cultures in English, for none of whom English is the mother tongue. And as the first, um, ELF is a contact language between persons who share neither a common, na neither a common native tongue uh, nor a common national uh, culture, and for whom English is the chosen foreign language of communication. And in order to ensure trustworthiness in this qualitative study, a series of techniques were used, such as methodological triangulation, peer debriefing, prolonged engagement for credibility, and audit trails for confirmability, and inquiry audit for dependability. Transferability could not be applied due to the conclusions drawn in the present study are not transferable to other times, contexts, and participants, in short, to a wider population. And all ethical issues were considered over the course of the study. So I'll share the general findings and the major themes emerge from the open-ended questionnaire and highlight some excerpts taken from this study. Majority of the instructors uh, were aware of negotiation of meaning strategies. However, uh, 30, uh, yeah, almost, yeah, 31% of the instructors truly have knowledge about how these strategies are used. Their teaching practice of these strategies vary, uh, whereas 81.8% um, of the instructors prefer explicit teaching. Only 18.2% um, of them preferred implicit teaching. And majority of instructors showed negative attitudes towards resorting to L1. And some instructors indicated that, uh, unfortunately, my students usually think in Turkish and make a translation from English to Turkish during communication. And when they want to use these strategies, they think in Turkish and it can causes them to make, uh, causes them to make mistakes. And moreover, they highlighted the significance of the combination of a teacher, student, teaching material, and the context. Uh, an example is in language learning, not only a course book, but also a teacher, a student, and the context is important, one teacher, one of the teachers uh, said. About the course books they are using, um, they show positive attitudes towards the communicative activities overall activities overall, but had some concerns. Um, for example, I believe that teachers should not only depend on the material itself, they should be, uh, they should be able to allow flexibility in class and encourage their students to use other expressions that course books don't provide. And another teacher said, I disagree because the course books include a standard form of English based on British norms. I'm just guessing uh, that these instructors may be elf aware. Let's now uh, look at the findings of the course book um, evaluation. As you can clearly see from the uh, picture, 188 native speaker interactions and 21 native speaker and non-native speaker interactions, and only seven non-native speaker interactions, non-native speaker and non-native speaker interactions were found. 
It is also it is also clear that each course book involves a considerable number of native speaker and native speaker interactions. Native and non-native interactions, especially non-native non-native ones, were paid rather less attention in each level of Cambridge English, English and Power. However, the writers, Foster and others, uh, mention in the book that the target language is clearly contextualized by means of engaging video film in the real world in context that will be relevant and familiar to adult learners. So this is what they claim. Um, and real world, uh, the term real world uh, is repeatedly uh, mentioned uh, in also their um, teacher's book. Um, but here are the origins of the main characters in the video. As you can see, they're all from the UK, Canada, only one Canada, I can see. Um, so it's apparent that it's clear that Cambridge English Empower does not completely free itself from the native norm and their claim contradicts with the real world uh, spoken communication. Uh, as you can see, all the characters in all levels of course books are from inner circle countries where English is used as a first language. For instance, the characters are from the UK, except uh, for the main character in the A1 level course book, who is a Canadian girl moving to London for work. Additionally, findings of audiovisual revealed that each storyline takes place in the UK. And as you can see here, the communication between non-native speakers flows. I think this is the um, core part of the study. Um, as you can see in the example, examples in this, these audio scripts, the communication between non-native speakers flows and it is not naturally occurring. That is, uh, there were no communication breakdowns or communication difficulties occur during the conversation. And therefore, negotiation of meaning strategies were not utilized by interlocutors at all. We can say that again, uh, this course book series does not truly reflect the real use of English as they claim. My third research question was about tasks and activities stimulating negotiation of meaning strategies. There are only four types of communicative, communicative tasks and activities were found. As you can see, there are many opinion exchange activities. Um, in total, 201. Role play activities, 83 role play, the number is. Uh, it's a, it comes as second, and information gap activities and picture comparison, 16 picture comparison activities, and decision making problem, decision making problem solving and picture drawing, they weren't included. Um, it can also be stated that there is no equal distribution among the communicative tasks and activities in the series. My findings for course book evaluation aren't in line with what many else research imply and suggest. Here, I would like to mention that since the publishing year of the course books in 2015, uh, they took into uh, account of uh, 2001 CFR. However, there is an urgent need to update this series according to CFR 2018 which is more elf friendly. Leung, uh, Leung and Jenkins has published a very, very significant article this um, I mean, last um, month and has seen updated CFR as a positive step. However, they concluded that uh, the enhanced prominence given to mediation in the recently extended 
and revised iteration of the CEFR is a positive step in recognizing multilingualism. It is, however, quite clear that the underlying assumptions of use of languages do not take sufficient account of dynamic uh, and flexible nature of multilingual communication. And when we look at the scripts again, we don't come across any dynamic, um, dynamic and flexible nature of multilingual communication. However, thanks to many empirical ELF studies, we can uh, clearly research, uh, sorry, we can clearly reach the examples of authentic ELF tasks where communication breakdown occurs and great number of different strategies are applied by, by interlocutors to co-construct uh, the meaning. When we also look at the expressions given in the book for negotiation, we can clearly see they are fixed to standard English norms and there is again no trace of variety and diversity of multilingual communication. And I can say that um, findings for course book evaluation are similar to what Ling and Jenkins um, Uh, mentioned. Uh, for example, um, the updated CFR has not taken account of the ways in which multilingual speakers make use of their entire uh, multilingual repertoires in order to promote successful uh, lingua franca communication, rather than trying to adhere um, inflexibly to the norms of any one specific language. And also there is certainly little recognition of co-construction in interaction, interactional discourse made more complex and unpredictable by the rich um, by the rich background languages and their associated sociocultural knowledges and practices. So the same uh, remarks, uh, Ling and Jenkins um, remarks applies to my findings. According to According to Sfakis and um, his friends, it is necessary to inform ELT practice with elements of authentic out-of-class communication involving non-native users of English. However, it's clear that um, Cambridge English and Power series is not um, truly ELF-informed. Um, as for instructors' perception, um, Almost all, I can say that almost all ELF research conducted so far support the significance of employing effective communication strategies for mutually intellig intelligible and successful communication. Findings of this study show that the instructors have different practices when it comes to strategy teaching. Majority of them prefer teaching negotiation of meaning strategies explicitly. Also in Kemanola Air study, the participants integrated L into their teaching practice in two ways, implicitly and explicitly. This is the case for teaching elf related uh, issues. Uh, what about um, strategy teaching? Um, so the results indicate that through explicit, strate explicit strate strategy training, the students in the strategy training group learn to make longer utterances that enhance their abilities to negotiate meaning and main, maintain the conversation flow than the control group. Um, also in my context, explicit integration refers to the way the instructors explicitly inform uh, the learners about communication strategies with the aim of ra uh, raising awareness, their awareness. On the other hand, the implicit way of strategy integration is realized through indirect references to communication strategies. Um, while Kellerman and Bailstock support implicit strategy teaching, Sato and Nakatani uh, support explicit strategy teaching in their studies. Uh, let's take a look at the other uh, other parts 
um, resorting, resorting to L1. Uh, my findings showed that the majority of the instructors had a negative attitude towards making use of L1. However, according to Bayard and Speckes, an Alphaware uh, teacher allows for learners using elements, uh, linguistic, cultural, or otherwise from their uh, mother tongue or even other languages they may share. And um, Akabari also rejects the assumption of learners uh, lang uh, for mother learners L1 as a negative force, hindering the, uh, their second language development. He instead suggests that a learner's uh, mother tongue, which is a part of their identity, can be considered as an asset, which may facilitate language teaching and learning uh, pro uh, process. Um, as for teachers' role, uh, according to Spakis and his colleagues, it's acknowledged that the crucial role of teachers in developing ways of integrating L in their local practice. In this regard, teacher education plays a particularly important role. Uh, moreover, teaching materials they prepare should be relevant to and appropriate for each local teaching and learning context it needs and it wants and um, idiosyncrasies. However, they should be autonomous enough to make the necessary adaptation for such an integration. Um, instructors basically, I mean, have a positive attitude towards the course books, but still have some concerns related to strategy teaching. Cambridge English and Power Coursebook Series adhe adheres firmly to native speakers and standard English for uh, norms, even though names and imitated accents from different lingua cultures were included. A good number of communicative tasks, we can say. However, not many various tasks and activities uh, were included. As for implications of the study, um, there is a need for effective teacher training programs at language teaching institutions for both native and non-native EFL teachers to raise awareness on alpha-aware pedagogy. It is necessary to raise alpha-awareness among course book or material writers, and there uh, should be definite uh, need for additional and supporting teaching materials that adopt alpha-aware pedagogy. And a new understanding of communicative competence that recognizes English as a global language or a lingua franca is needed. Uh, so uh, other implications are welcoming variation and diversity in the use of English in which interlocutors establish mutual intelligibility, adapting the material to their own context and the student's needs, and regarding mother tongue L1 as a source not as a law um, when necessary in order to establish a better understanding for successful and effective communication. So uh, there are recommendations for further research, micro, uh, macro study, including other remaining aspects and features of alpha bear pedagogy can be um, um, carried out in other research uh, and other sound claims they have other strong claims related to real world context um, pronunciate, regarding pronunciation. So that, that part can be investigated. And um, also uh, observations and can be uh, conducted and reflection papers uh, were also in, can, can also be included. Uh, and non-native -nat speakers and non-native dialogues uh, can also be investigated. Um, okay, so here are my references. And um, so I owe a special thanks to these beautiful people for their endless support. Um, thank you for being with me today. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to
answer. Thank you so much for the uh, presentation, Cura. And um, yeah, very, very interesting, a very interesting topic that although said by me doesn't, uh, it doesn't sound quite right since it's more or less the same things that I'm looking into. Uh, do we have any questions for uh, Cubra from the chat or uh, um, or uh, you can just pick up and uh, ask something to our guest otherwise uh, otherwise I do have some some questions ready. Okay, so I I will uh, I will begin and then we see if anybody else wants to wants to add something. Um, one thing I wanted to ask about the implications of the of the study. Um, one one of the suggestions that you gave was the the need to raise awareness of ELF among the people who develop course books. Now my question is how. How do do you think we could achieve that? Like, how can we as academics get um um you know get the the ideas across towards yeah. uh, okay you you mentioned these stakeholders specifically possibly to others as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, course book developers should be more aware of the literature uh, because uh, the really new study have been uh you know con con uh, have been conducting uh by re really in, in, uh, well known um uh, researchers in the field so they uh, have um actually they are conducting empir empirical research and uh, for example the Olinger study that i mentioned uh, is a great example of authentic elf communication so uh, by taking into account of those uh, studies, uh, research, uh, empirical uh, studies, um, they may have a better idea of um, how authentic elf interaction is being, you know, um, achieved uh, by non-native, between non-native speakers. Um, as I may also mention, like communication breakdowns, uh, as we can see based on the studies, we can clearly see there are communication breakdowns um but in uh, some uh in somehow like you know thanks to the communication strategies we are tackling those um uh, we are tackling those um problems occurring in our conversation like we are using many strategies um so they may take into account of those authentic elf interactions by uh, dwelling, you know, uh, more into literature. I mean, that would be my suggestion. Um, right, and uh, and you also mentioned. Uh, thank you for the answer. And you also yeah. mentioned uh, in the same page. You mentioned, uh, you know, quite rightly, we need to develop more resources, more uh, uh, materials for. Uh, which are sensitive towards ELF that understand the ELF and try, you know, to present a pedagogy which is more in tune with ELF. And quite rightly, you mentioned raising awareness to the material developers. My my question is, okay, so they they read about it, they understand what ELF is. Uh, where can we find, for example, as you mentioned, you know, portraying communication breakdown? Okay, I understand that's what I need to do. But how can I, you know, find examples? You know, well, what hmm. uh, what kind of uh, resources could these people use? Uh, either material developments or teachers who just want to add something to their um, to their standard textbooks. Yeah, thank you for your question. It can actually be achieved um, with um, tasks um, and activities that. Um, let that um, emerge um, the emerge the necessity of uh, using those strategies. For example, your task, uh, your um, during task based in instructions, 
you are assigning your students um, various tasks. And those tasks, in those tasks, they um, are required to um, ask, answer, and communicate uh, communication uh, strategies they are, uh, they are required to apply. Um, there, um, actually, uh, you will, um, as, as a teacher, as a guide, you are going, uh, you, you will feel that their interaction is very authentic and, um, and they are somehow like using communication uh, strategies and they're, how, they're somehow overcoming those difficulties by using various um, strategies, most of them maybe uh, that they are not aware of. Um, so actually, um, finding more like communi uh, communicative tasks, let's say, uh, through communicative tasks, integrating more communicative tasks and activities um, that allow uh, students to perform um, and, uh, you know, have um, interaction. Um, I think that that would be very beneficial. Um, All right. Uh, very, very Thank good. you so much. <laughs> Do you have any questions, Elif? Yeah, uh, if possible. Of course. Sure. <laughs> uh, Kibra, you you are uh, both a, res a teacher and a researcher. Mm -hmm. So while uh, before your study, did you have any expectations as a teacher about the research results? Because you know we have such kind of experience, and what made you investigate uh, these topics? Okay, thank you uh, for your question, my dear professor. Um, actually, uh, I, I mentioned um, here that the uh, interactions, actually the uh, in, interactions between, um, in the literature, I came across many uh, authentic elf talk and then I just uh, had a curiosity uh, in uh, examining the audio script and the dialogues, communications in the videos and the um, in the audios of the course books, because we mm -hmm. are uh, the claim is the real world um, context. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. So I just wanted to compare the the reality that we are uh, facing and also mm -hmm. what book um, claims. Um, and there I, I thought the, the communication um, is, is flowing, but actually in mm -hmm. real world, this is not true. So this uh, was the point that I made a decision to, um, re to, uh, to study more uh, and to um, have more depth um, uh, research in, in this um, project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so your research is based on your real, ex real life based actual teaching experience, right? Uh, yeah, so it, yeah. it's also precious mm -hmm. uh, in this regard because, you know, we yeah. as teachers, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. have questions in our mind and try to delve into them. Uh, and uh, when we are given research opportunities, we usually dig into the things that uh, we we are curious about so that's what you also experience right definitely and as a teacher also as a non-native let's say as, as a, as a mm -hmm. uh, teacher for uh, living in turkey and teaching english as a as a second language um i can say that i am having a lot of communication breakdowns during my interactions so uh, mm -hmm. while I'm by you know, um, myself having this experience, um, of course, um, led me to, um, you know, do my study and research uh, in the field. Um, yeah, so that's precious. That study is also precious in this regard uh, because, I mean, uh, when you're a teacher, you are given a course book and this course book is believed to solve all the problems, but yes. no, the reality is different, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we are also left alone with the course books and the students in the class. So uh, we should be the ones, again, trying to find solutions and also trying to uh, shed 
light on the real life facts which uh, really yeah. happen in the classrooms. The course book owner and uh, the course book publishers are usually giving lip service to ELF. They don't really, uh, I, I don't want to generalize, but that's the case at the moment, uh, at <laughs> least. They don't give, uh, they don't attach e enough importance to ELF and global English's issues. Uh, their mindset should change. But uh, compared to the previous uh, days, uh, time, I mean, it's better. Mm -hmm. But it, I, hopefully it will get better and better through our, uh, I mean, investigations and disseminations. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you very much. We should actually really set a, um, a realistic expectations um, on our students. Um, we shouldn't really, um, the expectations are really important. So it should be really realis realistic. Um, and um, you're right. Yeah, before actually, before I transformed into an elf aware teacher, maybe I uh, wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't appreciate those um, overcoming uh, problems uh, in, in, in interaction. Maybe I would just see them as flaws. I'm sure like many mm -hmm, teachers mm -hmm. are uh, maybe still like um, like this um, because of oh, their the, the conversation is not flowing, the breakdown. Mm -hmm. But now I yeah. appreciate the strategies they are applying. And this is real uh, mm -hmm. life. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I would really appreciate because ALF makes students and teachers more aware and more confident. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, and with, for example, you know, many variations are not uh, errors. There's uh, variations. They're unique forms, you know. So mm -hmm. strategies also can be taken as an asset of a non-native speaker, right? Yeah, yeah, true. And, mm -hmm. and we okay. should really emphasize those strategies as well, because what can we do? I mean, in real life settings, if we don't understand something, if we try to make our meaning across. So we use these strategies, they are mm -hmm. real and they're there, mm -hmm. and they should be integrated more into the English classroom, uh, yes. because we can't give direct messages. Even in our first language, we can't do this. How can we manage it in our second language? True, yeah. And also in the literature, as I came across, you know, many uh, examples uh, of real authentic dialogues, uh, I can now say that, yeah, course book developers can uh, take those interactions into account. Like I showed in the Batsiaka study, for example, the mm -hmm. dialogues, and there are many others. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank, thank you, so you for your thank question. Thank you so much, so much for illuminating this uh rarely investigated and uh, real life based topic. Thank you. Thank you very much for your questions. Um... Right. Is there anybody else who has a question for our guest? I think I think people have exhausted their uh, their questions. So I think we can wrap this up here. So uh, thank you again, Cuba, Cuba for um, for the presentation. Again, a very interesting topic. We will see. We will see how many developments we can accomplish during this decade. Hopefully, is going to be a really, a really good one for ELF. We are going to see. <laughs> but yeah, thank you again and. Uh, we will keep you informed on uh, the updates of the video. I will actually stop recording right now.